So there's been a lot of research on hospital-acquired infections and the cost of those infections. But in the period between 2006 and 2012, there have been a lot of changes in the healthcare system and particularly changes that relate to infection. So one is that back in 2008, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services changed reimbursement for people who had hospital-acquired infections. They didn't allow the hospital-acquired infection to count in coding that discharge as more serious. So they effectively re reduced the reimbursement for those infections. At the same time, there have been a lot of changes in the pharmaceutical market. New drugs have come online. Other drugs have gone into generic. So there have been changes in the prices of pharmaceuticals. And as always, there's always a technological improvement. Doctors and hospitals get better at treating patients. So we were interested in learning whether all of those changes that happened between 2006 and 2012 had impacted the length of stay, the cost, or mortality from hospital-acquired infections. One thing that we found is that actually very little had improved with respect to the treatment of hospital-acquired infections. Length of stay hadn't fallen. Mortality hadn't gotten any better. Um, we generally found no real changes in the cost of those infections over time either. Um, the one exception to that is that we saw some indication that the cost per day for a couple of kinds of infections had fallen. Given the patterns we were seeing, it's most likely that those costs fell because prescription pharmaceuticals switched from brand name to generic. So we didn't get any better at treating the cases. We didn't get any better at sort of saving money on them. But because the price of the drugs and treating them fell, we actually realized a little bit of savings. One of the things that might be interest, might, might change the way we thought about hospital-acquired infections is if we suddenly became really good at treating them. So if they no longer caused anybody any problems, it wouldn't be that important to worry about preventing them. We didn't find that at all. We found that the kinds of problems that hospital-acquired infections cause in terms of mortality, length of stay, and high charges, those really haven't changed even in this period of fairly dramatic reimbursement change. It's really important to prevent those infections. If we had moved the dial with respect to mortality, we might say we could uh, sort of step back on prevention, but we have not moved the dial with respect to the outcomes of these infections. So prevention is as important as ever.